This is Br'er Caleb, Ph.D. My pen name is of a citizen of the other kingdom, and the Ph.D. stands for Post Hole Digger. We will continue to dig for a proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. Hi folks, this is Brad Kayla, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. That means I continue to work on the prodigal son and daughter's blueprints. That means we want a solid foundation. When the whole world is upside down, what do you do? Is there a way of holding on to something that can ease you away? That means is there anything? Is there a foundation? Is there something you can hold on so that you have at least peace of mind? And maybe even more than that. Maybe they are on your way to the promised land. But folks, what is going on with the attitude as we as people have that belief? And when I say belief, I prepared videos for quite some time now. I've got over, I think about 300 videos, and they all talk about Br'er Caleb. Br'er Caleb that is dealing with a subject pertaining to Yeshua HaMashiach. But what does that really mean? Who is Br'er Caleb? And why is it so important that I use Br'er Caleb? My PhD is post hole digger. That means something. That means very simple. I have lived 70 years. Uh, the first 60 years, I was digging and working and trying to live as a Christian, a good Christian. And when I ended up sentenced for six years to prison, I wondered what in the world got me here. And as I was dissecting, why did I get in the position I'm in? I noticed I was not the only one. It looks like the whole world is upside down. And as I digested what was going on, and I started writing in Maximum Security in Canada, I kept on writing. And as the Lord gave me wisdom and insight and understanding, it turns out that everything you believe in, you will be tested on. Is it true what you believe in? Are the values that you have been given or that the values that you have been living based on what your teachers told you, your professors told you, or your pastor told you, are they true? And if you find out that your foundation that you built your life on is not as strong as it should be, maybe it is time to do what I had to do. Re-evaluate your life and work on it by opening your mind. See, we had a direction. And that direction was very simple, to follow the narrow road, the narrow path. Now, how do you do that? Let's find out. There is a saying, what you're diagnosed with is not something that defines you, but it is something that you can defy. Do we live in an upside down world? Br'er Caleb, PhD. How parallel reality can be created? See, there are people that are wondering about the whole pandemic. I wrote about the exposure that Mr. Trump has gotten his insurrection on January the 6th, and then the scary thought that the group of people called GOP, 
the Republicans in the United States of America that stood for something at the time in the life are now scared for a man that lies, that cheats, that steals, that rapes and treats women like they are pieces of furniture? Folks, what is wrong? Yes, we have the church or the body of Christ and they confirm or they act as if it's very normal to serve a man like Trump. Mr. Trump is somebody that you have to be very careful with because it is not just Mr. Trump. It is the whole underlying line. If the enablers, the body of Christ, are following a man with the spirit of the Antichrist, does that mean that we are now in the end time? Not really. We are just idiots. We are morons to follow a guy like him. I've talked with some people that are pastors and they say, what is wrong with Mr. Trump? Well, first and foremost, let's just not talk and zoom in on what is wrong. Let's zoom in what God wants from us. See, we live in a society that is being exposed. Everything that was done in darkness shall be released, shall be exposed to the light. But who is the light? God Almighty is light. God is love. But what is happening then? Why are we in such an dangerous society? Why is it so scary to move? Now, right now, the weather is upside down. Uh, there are terrible incidents happening with a cold that we haven't seen for what, 100, 150 years or longer even. And it is scary what is happening with the United States. At one time, it was the beacon of hope, a beacon of light, a beacon of, wow, we all want to be like the United States. And Mr. Trump in less than four years time has been able to dismantle that and sell out to the enemy. But who is the enemy? I don't think that Mr. Putin is the enemy. He is part and parcel of it. But the real enemy that we are dealing with is called Beelzebub, Satan. He is the one that has always been very annoyed with the fact that Adam and Eve were created according God's image. Now, what does that really mean for us? Being created according God's image means that you and I are also part of that image of God. We are created according his image. And if we deny God and we don't care about God and we move on like we are King Kong, we are still fighting our own image according God's image. So what is the image of God that is in us? that is in conflict with what is going on. See, God created us to live forever, but he did not want us to live forever in a lost state. So therefore he had interact the moment Adam and Eve sided with Beelzebub in the Garden of Eve. And by protecting his children, because he loves his children, he therefore did something very unique. He did not punish them, but he cut them off. The moment they were cut off of God's presence, they were safe because God's presence would have killed Adam and Eve in sin. See, sin is missing your goal. Sin is not following the will of God. Sin is living outside of the presence of God. And so God wanted to restore that. And that's why my channel is also called Restorative Justice Simplified. How can we simplify restorative justice, our relationship back with God? I can talk about this personally because I had a very uh, challenging time when I grew up as a kid. When I was six years old, my mom died and I was the oldest of five. And that meant we went all to the, hosp uh, to the orphanage. Being in an orphanage uh, meant for me, I had to work because I was the oldest and I had to help all the other kids as well. So it was not fun. But seven years later, my father remarried and it turns out I was outgrown and home. I didn't know how to act in a family life. So very shortly thereafter, 
I was on the street and living on the street and studying still, having an opportunity to still go to seminary, Bible school, working on a missionary office and preaching for 12 years, traveling around the world, gave me an opportunity to understand people to understand the desire of people, whether you're in Africa or in, Af in, in Asia, that didn't matter. People are all the same. And so as I was studying and working, I ended up working on Wall Street. I worked on a private bank. It was a tremendous opportunity for me. I had great fun with it. And I realized what I was learning, there was a similarity and I was looking for it. What is it? Because I always wondered what is moving us here. And I came up with the term PMS, not the PMS that women are fighting every uh, month, but politics and the M for money and the S for spirituality or religion. Those are the three forces that Satan uses to control people. And God created us according to his image because he made us physical. He took up the soil from Mother Earth. And as he took up the soil, he blew in his hands in the soil. And he, his breath gave us life. And now we became alive. And as he created us according to his image, he created us to live forever. But when we sided with Satan, with Beelzebub, by not listening and obeying God, he had to cut us off immediately, otherwise we would have been lost forever. And therefore, when God stopped the relationship, he was looking for men and women that were willing to restore that relationship. And finally, he found a man by the name of Abraham, or Abraham as we know him. And Abraham became a man walking with God. And God taught him and God educated him how the relationship between God was. That there was only one God. And when Moses came along, Moses was a killer. He killed someone with his bare hand. Well, God doesn't get impressed easily and that was not a big deal. But God had to teach him why you don't kill people. And God had to teach him what love and patience was. And after 40 years going through the desert, working as a goat herder, as a sheep herder, somebody that's dealing with nature, understanding what patience is, understanding what love is. There was something happening in a man like Moses, trained by the Egyptians in the Egyptian technology, understanding way more than most people ever did because the Egyptians were at that time extremely powerful. He was trained as a prince. He knew how to kill. He knew how to fight. He was a warrior. He was the ultimate guy that actually should have been in the White House. But you know what happened? God said, Moses. And as Moses came and said, yes, Lord, the burning bush, take your shoes off, take your sandals off, because this is holy ground. God allowed Moses into his presence on holy ground. And as Moses changed, Moses became the man of God, the man of God that you and I are looking for, becoming a man of God, becoming a man of God, folks. That is what we're shooting for. That is what is so important. Are you still with me? See, when we come to understand that we are becoming what we are created for, then you understand that pressure is okay. It is the pressure around us that forms us. It is no fun being in a pandemic. It's terrible if your lights are out for two, three, four, five days, or maybe longer. We don't know because what is happening, there's a deep freeze in the United States that has never happened before. And over 150 million people are exposed to it. And yet other people are swimming on and sitting on the beach down south in Florida. Folks, pressure is what quite often exposes us to become a better person if you let it. 
See, we are so dignified. We are so full of ourselves. We know so much or we're so stupid that we don't even know what is going on that you miss the opportunity to get to know God. As this pressure cooker is boiling and boiling and boiling, it feels ugly. You must wonder, why is this pandemic going on? Why are the enablers of President Trump helping him with an insurrection? You say, but who are those enablers? Folks, most likely you were one of them and you might not even be aware of it. An enabler is somebody that voted for Trump, accepted Trump, allowed Trump to lie, to steal and to do whatever because Mr. Trump is not what he appears. Now, I am not teaching or preaching about him. I'm just sharing with you that you, as the body of Christ, have a set of directions if a man wants to be a leader. And if you check that out, it also states man speaks up and said, thus says the Lord, and the Lord did not speak, then that man is a liar. And if that person is called your leader or leaders, because many people have done this, then you have to repent. And as you are repenting, maybe you want to look a little further. What are your principles based on? Because that is the real problem. So now that you maybe get an inkling of what I'm referring to, Jesus, which was properly pronounced Jesua HaMashiach, we are following somebody, something that is properly explained, a guide. He came here to fulfill the law of God. He had one goal, to serve God, fulfill his law, and then he now had to train 12 other people to do the same. Are those 12 people gods? Is Peter a god? Is John a god? Is Thomas a god? No. They were disciples of Jesua HaMessiah. So is Jesus a god? No. Jesus came to fulfill the will of God. There is one God, but we have a major problem that we have been deceived because as we are deceived, and how do I know that? By the choices the church of God made, by the choices that the followers of Jesua made that call themselves Christians. Do you know when Christianity started? 325 years before Christ was born. Oops. Big mistake. I don't want to hear about that. I just go and do what I always done. See, that is your problem. If you only want to do what you always have done, then you've got a major problem, folks. Because what you've always done is what got you into this problem. See, the pandemic is created. People are pointing a finger because Trump lied so much. He said, oh yeah, that's a Chinese virus. But reality is, we created our own problems. We created our own problems. And that's all I want to say. I want you to start thinking. I want you to start examining yourself. See, when we got through Moses the Ten Commandments, God had issued a covenant. A covenant with Ten Commandments. The basics of who and what and where. How can we live in the new kingdom of God? That was a covenant that was friends among friends saying, listen, if you do this, I can help you with this. Awesome. But they were just acting like morons, dancing and partying and drunk. And Moses got so mad, he destroyed those Ten Commandments. And when that happened, God said, I understand. Let me give you the Ten Commandments for the children of darkness. See, the covenant was designed for the children of light. But the people that now have to choose because between life and death. Yes, you've heard that term. You know what I'm talking about. You are now dealing with the Ten Commandments of the children of darkness. 
And when that happens, what happens to you? When you fail the Ten Commandments, you cursed, you swore, you didn't celebrate the Sabbath, or you ate this, or you did whatever you did to break the Ten Commandments, you became indebted. You owe somebody. And it isn't God. Because now you owe Satan. And that is right, what is happening right now. As we are living in a society which is going bonkers, where we have a president that is an insurrectionist, is a terrible individual that only thinks about himself and filling his pockets as hard and as fast as he can. We are indebted to Satan. And it is Satan that is calling the shots. And that is why you are owing Satan. And the only person that can set us free is God Almighty. But how do we connect that? How do we get to that point where God can set us free from Satan? Remember the story that Jesua shared with the pro about the prodigal son? When he said, Father, he was with his face smacked down in the shits. Yes, folks, we want to hear such nice talk, blah, 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 blah. But he was desperate. He was a Jewish person working with swines, pigs. There's nothing worse. And he was eating out the food so that he had something to fill his stomach. And that is what we are symbolically. It feels like everything is going down the drain. But what do we have that we can do? We can remember that we are created according God's image. The Father, Abba Father. And he gave us a path, a small narrow path. And he said, follow the path. Now, why did he say that? Because it is on that narrow path that God's presence is. It's not on the Broadway. Oh, yeah, it's raise your hands and praise the Lord. You're a Christian now. That is the Christianity from the Roman Empire in 325. That was not Christianity from Jesua HaMessiah or Jesus. He came to set us free. But you have to make that decision. Nobody is going to make that decision for you. And if you can accept the fact that you have been wrong, and if your pride is hurt so much that you have none left over, and you're willing to accept the fact that God is an awesome God, and when you return to Abba Father, say, Abba, I was wrong. Forgive me. See, I can talk very difficult and very complicated and from Hebrew into this and explain how, what and where. But you're not going to listen anyway, so why would I do it? But giving it simple to you, you screwed up. And if you finally open your eyes because it's so cold, your electricity is cut, your food is disappearing, you hardly have anything left over, maybe you come to your senses. When you repent... And you turn around and you go back to Abba, Father. I say, Abba, forgive me. I have sinned. That's what I did. I was a preacher for many years. But I failed. So what? I'm a sinner, just like you. But do you dare to admit that you need Abba? And that you would turn and turn around and do no more? And God will pay the debt that we owe to Satan. And then it will be turned around. We will be overcome. So God loves you. Folks, it is hard. It is not easy. Acknowledging that you fail. Acknowledging that you goofed up. But God is an awesome God. For tough times never last. The tough people, they do. God bless you.